Hi and welcome to the channel. You join me on yet another QRM hunt. This will be my third. Uh, here we're on 80 meters and you can see on the display uh, repeating peaks. This looks very s similar to the uh, QRM I found uh, a couple of years ago and regulars to the channel will know that was a, a trickle charge battery charger which which I tracked down and, and eliminated. Uh, here uh, you can see it on the waterfall. In fact I'll turn the volume up and this is what it sounds like and it just re repeats and repeats and repeats uh, and uh, S9 of noise so just move about a bit so looks like the spacing and the noise that I experienced before I've got some more QRM on 40. Uh, so here we are on 40. Uh, if I try to show you this one, this one's a bit unusual. Um, so you can see these these lines, and they'll repeat. There's three lines, and they have like a bit of a a bit of a a burbling noise associated with them. If I find a, a clear one, if I go up here, 7190. Turn it up a bit. Uh, there's one just, just out of band. A little change. There's three, four there. I don't know what that is. And that one will stop. There you go. It's as though something's running out of energy and charging itself up again and away it goes. So you can see them all. Now I'm out of band. You can see it clear. And to top it all, on top band, Right on 1830, I've got that, and again you can see it repeating. Um, so, first things first, uh, power off test, see if this is me or not. So I've powered the house off at the mains, and I've got an FTDX10 running off a small battery. Uh, that's because the 5000 runs off mains, so I can't use that. So the house power off test and running on battery showed that the QRM is not coming from my house so it's time to go on a QRM hunt and utilise the direction finding loop. Here's a picture of the QRM I had last time and as you can see it's very similar. So this is the original loop that I made and I'll put a, a link above to that video. It's to the design of the Australian uh, Amateur Radio Society. Uh, and in feedback to the video and as well as the Radcom article um, there were suggestions of how to make this loop more sensitive and particularly uh, from Don WD8DSB uh, suggested how to make it more sensitive in the lower bands which is I think what I need this time round. This loop uh, isn't detecting this QRM uh, on 80 meters. Uh, it's obviously not strong enough uh, to be detected so I need a bit more sensitivity lower down. Just to do, remind you what this actually looks like under the skin, um, if we uh, if we put that there to one side, and then draw um, what this connection actually looks like. So if we've got coax at the uh, at the bottom, and if we put the uh, the centre as as red, so the braid goes up to the top of the loop. There's a 20 mil break and then it comes back down so two two arms of braid effectively uh, which are connected by those PLs and then the center core uh, does make it round the top through that section it gets to the other end but isn't connected so that PL over there doesn't have the center connected and this is the the first loop design so um, 
Don's suggestion is to make a more traditional loop design and connect that centre back to the braid. So unlike that design, it's not connected. This design is connected, and this should make it more sensitive at the lower bands. Now I could just make a change to that loop, but I want to keep that one intact. So I'm going to make a new one, and I'm also going to avoid using uh, this hardware here and just have a, a PL259 at the bottom. So I'll, I'll make the loop uh, soldering it only. Uh, so fingers crossed this one will be more sensitive and uh, help me find the QRM. So here you can see I've bared off the end of some 213, so we've got the centre and the braid connected uh, and I'll solder those together. And the idea is we make the 900mm loop, bear off some braid at the right point here, solder that connection, make the 20mm cut at the top in the braid and then take this away to the PL259 and then give it some support like last time with some plastic tubing so in case of measuring this round uh, and then making the cut and that's the that's how it's going to work hopefully so I'm going to start just by soldering this end of the coax uh, so it doesn't all unravel uh, I'm just going to get a bit of solder on the the core before that's wrapped inside so I've got a bit of solder on the core now I'll just wrap that up when that cools off and now to heat this up and get some solder flowing through the braid. So I've got a good uh, covering of solder there so that'll uh, that'll be connected to the car now and we can check that when we cut the other end and uh, solder that background onto the braid. And now to measure uh, for the centre cut uh, that's in the middle of the the 900 mil loop. So just like on the last loop we now need to find the centre and then make a, a 20 mil cut either side so I'm just going to go for 45 or 450 mil from the end of that outer cover so that's the centre 10 mil one side 10 mil the other so I'm just going to mark that with tape so I know how to how to cut that outer jacket and then cut the the, sh the braid off. So there's the, uh, the 20 mil gap I'm going to cut the, the outer jacket and the braid on. Remembering this is still a longer length because I don't know how long I need yet to make the tail for the connection to the rig. So I'm now going to slice this with a, with a knife and then nibble away uh, at, the, uh, at the braid. Now it's a case of nibbling away at the braid with some side cutters without uh, damaging the dielectric in the centre. Then we'll just cover this up with some tape. So now, now we need to measure the other half of the loop. Remember it's a 900 mil loop and bear off some braid here to make that solder connection. And then we've got the, the full loop. So effectively I need another 44 centimetres, 440 mil length from the edge of the centre brake. So there's 440 mil that way, 20 mil gap, and 440 mil that way. So if I just mark that up again with a pen, edge of that loop, 44 is there. So that's the same distance as the other end, and that's where I need to make the break to solder that end under here. So I'm just going to kind of try and cut out a, a square 
looks like I might do that. Yep. So I'm going to cut out a square, I think. If I can get away with this. And this sun's helping because everything's nice and soft. When I last did this on the other loop, it was January and it was freezing cold. So, hopefully, you can see this okay. We're going to solder that onto there, and that's with a bit of support. That's the loop. This end's been terminated once that's on there, and I cut this for a PL attachment I'll check that that's making contact uh, it should do the amount of solder that went on there so next to get some solder on that and make that connection so here goes I'm gonna get some solder onto that joint hopefully you can see this okay Not the best soldering outside. You lose some heat despite the warm weather. So it's not the best soldering outside. Uh, but I'm now going to attach that onto there. And uh, I'll just try and zoom in. Hopefully you can see that better. Um, so this is going to be a little bit trickier. Because now I have to get heat. this joint but hopefully there's enough solder down there so I'll admit I'm, uh, I'm struggling to get heat in the job outside to do this so I'm just gonna get both halves hot yeah that's on Hopefully I haven't applied too much heat and I've gone all the way through the centre. I think that's okay. So you can see the two loops side by side. Uh, and what I've tried to do is avoid all this hardware. Uh, so now I just need to add a PL259 on the bottom here. Uh, I've got a bit more of this plastic tube in to give that shape and uh, and cover this up as well. And when I cut this, I'll, I'll check uh, that we've got the short that we need there. And... Uh, Looking at that joint, I think we're okay. So, next to PL259 and fix it to a, a plastic boom. So, before I fit the PL259, I'm just going to check we've got a short, which is ironically what you don't want normally. A braid and centre. Yep, you can see on the meter there. Well, if I move that wire, you can see we've got a short. So now to fit the plug. So we've got the plug on, just need to attach this to the boom and cover this up and I think we're ready. So not the prettiest of jobs but tape that on, got the PL on, tape that there ready to connect the coax and uh, it's reasonably round and flat. Uh, and to compare, uh, that's the first loop with uh, the T-piece and the PLs uh, and all that goes with it. So this one's a much simpler uh, com construction method and cheaper um, and hopefully it, uh, it's got more sensitivity than this one on the low band so mark one mid to high bands mark two hopefully mid to low bands we'll see so it's a bit more trickier carrying the FDDX10 around portable than the 991A uh, I think there's a flashing screen there. Right, so... I don't know why that's flashing. Loop number one. So this is the original loop. And I'm going to spin it round. And that's what I found the first time round. So we're now on loop number two. Volume, and then I'll put the microphone closer. There we go. So there, 
outside on nothing. So it's either that way towards my house or behind me. Right, so we're in the back garden. The 80 meter dipole is up there. So it could be the houses on the other side of that road. So we'll go down the garden and uh, set the rig up again and try again. Right, so we're on the bottom of the garden. Got the rig on a chair. Area up. Let's turn that volume up a bit more. It's a bit weaker down here, I would say. Still, still this way. It's out of focus. I can still leave it there. But weaker. So maybe it's around the front. Right, so we're back around the front. So I'm going to go that way now. So I'm further up the road and you can see it's not the house opposite which is that one. It still seems to be coming from that direction. Or that direction. But it seemed to be weaker behind our house. So, so this is the top of the road leaving the estate very weak maybe that way it's definitely not up here coming further back in so you got permission to go to the neighbour's back garden this is a house behind So our house is over that way. So just to take stock of where we are, here's an overview of where I live. The the red line is my 80 meter dipole. The to the right is the the fainter yellow line uh, when I went down the garden. A weaker signal, stronger signal at the front of the house there to the front left of the dipole, stronger still over near the neighbour's house. And you can see the other the other readings I took as I went up and down the road. So it's all pointed towards that estate uh, next door, uh, over the back of my neighbours, and possibly those three houses in in that direction so we need to continue the search that way so day three i set off around the neighboring estate you can see all the roads in the blue line there and off the bottom of the screen uh lugging the the gear around uh, i found as i moved around the estate the new loop was a bit too sensitive as i got close in so around the edge i could see the intervenes was somewhere in there but i couldn't um, detect which direction very easily when I was in the in the estate so dragged the gear all the way back and I can confirm the FTDX10 a lead acid battery and the loop is not easy carrying equipment uh, back around again with the original loop which was less sensitive uh, and that that helped a lot that helped me home in uh, so I think it's somewhere around these houses here marked on the map but the battery was getting low so I've, I saved that further investigation for another day So day four, I went back round, I knocked on the door of the bottom start house, spoke to a very nice lady, explained what I was doing. She was only too happy to help. But as I was demoing the noise on her doorstep, uh, I noticed it was a little bit less. And that's the first time I hadn't been on, on public paths or roads that I'd actually entered someone's garden. Uh, and I don't think it's her house. I then uh, looked around the estate a bit more to see if I could trace it down further. Apologies for the lack of footage at this point, but you'll appreciate I'm walking around people's houses and roads who don't know me. And you remember what I said about the loop being sensitive of both sides? Uh, that's what I've fallen foul of. The uh, noise was actually coming from the house behind me, uh, not the house in front of me. Uh, and lo and behold, on the drive, there was a car with a mains lead running from under the garage door, 
guessing it's on trickle charge. Unfortunately, when I knocked on the door, there was nobody in. So I've got to go back and try again. Well, nothing simple. Uh, I went round the house with my gear in tow many a time, still nobody in. I eventually found, with a bit more door knocking, a, a contact number. I spoke to a lady who was only too happy to help, uh, but uh, I haven't yet seen the charger, uh, but I'm looking forward to going round and, and uh, seeing what model it is and hopefully uh, taking it off the air. So I haven't laid eyes on the, the charger yet, I still need to, to actually see the lady uh, uh, concerned, but she seems to have turned it off, because um, there we go. Uh, that bar uh, was there before, but the, the, the massive uh, interference uh, either side and across the band has gone. Uh, if you remember, uh, it was, where are we, around here, was absolutely chock-a-block with noise, there's that bar, but uh, the others have gone. Uh, interestingly, now that's gone, the if I, if I fire up uh, 40, uh, those ones are still there, the little burbly things, so uh, I might uh, I might focus on those now, but uh, the main thing is the uh, the main one's gone, so hopefully I'll get to see this charger and, and take it out of action and replace it. Well, I have a feeling that won't be my last QRM hunt, but uh, if you enjoyed the video, I hope you found it useful. It might spur you on to try and rid yourself of some QRM. Uh, please like and uh, consider subscribing to the channel. 73.